Hello and welcome in my next tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can make force field material in Cinema 4D and Octane. First, let's talk about the scene. In the scene, we have floor, wall, and our character, and two materials applied to it. In the settings, I just have path tracing. Now we can start making our force field. Let's start from adding sphere, which will later be turned to our force field. Let's scale it up till it covers our character. It can be also any other shape but the sphere is the easiest to showcase it. Let's bump up the segments and change the type to icosahedron. Also, here in the display we want to change to the lines so we can see the density. This density is probably like the lowest you want to go with and the more triangles you will have here the better results will be. But for the sake of the performance I will stick with this amount. Now let me disable the lines and click at the sphere here and click C on the keyboard to make it editable. Now we want to go here to polygon selection mode and here in a select we want to set the vertex weight. Click OK and here click at the vertex map we just created and we want to add here shader field. Also in the basic we want to click use fields to make it work. It will generate freeze field here which we can delete. In a shader field we want to click at the shader, add noise, click at the noise change it to dense, which works best in this scenario, and change the octaves to 1. Now we can go back by clicking this arrow here, and go to the remapping, and in the remapping go down to control mode. We want to change it to step, which will result in just 0 and 1 values. Now if we switch to object selection mode, we can just see our results better without the polygon selection. And if we go to the field and noise, we want to change the animation to 1, let's pause the live viewer and let's hit the play. Now we can see what's going on. It's definitely quite chaotic right now, so we can change the brightness here to make less dots appear on our shader, like so. Let me crank up the frames and animations so we can have a bit more examples. And you can also change, change the global scale if you want uh, a bit more space between them. Now let's go back here, and now let's add decay here, which will make our dots disappear a bit smoother. Now we want to add freeze, change the mode of the freeze to grow, and change the effect strength to 30%, and in a radius of the freeze we want to have 70%, and depends on the density of your mesh, you need to adjust the radius here. We're looking for this kind of effect, where we have those small explosions, now let's create uh, Octane Material, go to the Create, Extensions for the Octane, and Octane Material, and let's apply it to our sphere. Double click on it, and click at the Node Editor. In the Node Editor, we want to click at our material, go to the Basic, and here we want to change the material type to Universal, and BRDF model to GGX Energy Preserving. Now we can uncheck most of those stuff, aspect the EOR, Transmission, Emission, common and editor. That's all we need here. In the EOR, let's turn it down to 1 and in the transmission change the transmission type to specular and we want full white color here. Let's also pause our animation and unpause live viewer so we can see what's going on with our material. In the emission, we want to add the texture emission and in the common, we just want to add fake shadows. Now let's click at the texture emission node here. We can change the power to whatever value we need. For me, it will be 200. And now we want to add color to it. So let's add RGB spectrum and connect it not to texture, but to the distribution. And here we want nice blue color, but it can be whatever color you want. Now go to the custom pattern, drag out the tile patterns and connect it to the texture. In the tile patterns, we want to change type to hexagon, change first color to full black and second color to like 10% to 20% black. Now let's connect transform to tile pattern and lower it to, till it looks fine for you. For me it will be 0 0.03 in this case and now I want to drag it out here quite far and add multiply after it. Also if you scroll here down you will find vertex map or you can right click and type in vertex map connected to a texture too and you want to drag the vertex map from our uh, sphere to the node editor and now our vertex map is represented here in our material now we want to add a few add nodes here i think it was free because this is what we need here and let's add falloff let's connect it to the first add 
and let's add dirt as well. Let's connect it to the second add here and also let's invert it right away. And here we want to directly connect it to the vertex map and add octane gradient here between. And let's for now leave it at 10%. Now let's adjust all of those settings. First, in the falloff, you can use the maximum value to change how bright you want it to be and change the falloff skew factor to change how thick it is. I will go with settings like this. And in a dirt, you can change the radius to have nice falloff which separate our force field from the ground. And also you want to probably change the include object mode to just others. Uh, you can also adjust the strength to change the brightness of it, like so. As for the vertex map, we want to add another gradient map here and we can cell node it. And by alt clicking and dragging out those sliders, we can copy them. We want to make something like this, where we have small waves from the center of our explosions something like this and in the second gradient we just tone it down let's disable the cell node and we can see those small waves here we can now adjust the brightness of them by changing brightness of this slider here in the second gradient like so and you probably can see it doesn't look like uh, cycles it's because we have quite low density of the triangles so if you at the start make sphere with more segments it will just looks better now, if you go to the texture emission, you can also click at the double sided to see it's going around our character. But at the same time, we have a lot of overlapping hexagons from the back and the front. So I will have cool fix for it later on. We want to go to the settings now and to post and enable the post. Now just drag out the bloom till it looks fine for you. And then you can also use the cutoff to delete unnecessary bloom from your scene, like so. Okay, now we want to go here to the node editor and copy this whole material here. Also make sure you reconnect here vector map because it will disconnect after duplicating it. And we want to add mix material here. Now let's connect them both to mix material. And let's also apply our mix material to sphere. And now if we go to one of the sides, uh, by changing the amount to just one side and making sure we are in the correct one by uh, disconnecting first one. So now we can uh, just do a few adjustments here. For example, we can enable the double sided here and if we connect it back and change the amount to just half of it, we can see that the back is getting way darker now. If we compare it by storing the render buffer, here is full uh, visible background and here is just semi-transparent. So we can balance how much we want of the back visible. Also, we can do a few nice adjustments by adding the file off here and connecting it to the amount. So I actually had to change the order here of those materials. And as you can see, now it's slowly fading back uh, at the back of the character. Now we don't see it at all. If we turn it like this, we see our back again. And if we balance it nicely, we have this nice file off behind and if you want to make sure there's always a bit of it, you can crank up the minimum value a bit higher till we see just a bit of it. And this is how you make force field material in Cinema 4D. If we click the animation now, we can see it's all animated. Probably hard to see since we just see every fifth uh, frame, but it will look just fine as in the animation I showed you at the beginning of this video. Now I will show you a few tricks to make it even better. If we go here to the node editor and select both of our materials, we can change the EOR here to 1.03 or something around this value. This might be even too much, like 0.2 is probably enough. And we'll have a bit of this um, bending on the, on the edges of our force field to make it look a bit more interesting. We can also apply vertex map from one of the source here directly to the EOR. It will be a bit messy right now. But if we add the gradient between those two nodes, we can do a few adjustments. First, we want here full white to make it normal looking. And on the other side, we want to make it full black. Now uh, we can just lower it here till we have just rings around our uh, small uh, explosions on our force field. Now we can even lower the value of the black slider here to something more white. And now our 
force field will also bend background on each of these explosions. Of course, again, it will be more uh, rounded if we have denser mesh, but also performance will suffer here greatly. Another thing we can do is go here to the Cinema 4D. We can minimize Octane node editor for now. And here we can go to the deformers and add displacer underneath our sphere. Go to the fields uh, in the displacer and drag out our vertex map here. We can pause the live viewer for now and in a displacer. And here we want to go to the shading and add simple color shader here. And now we have displays going on based on our vertex map, which will again go along those small explosions here on our force field. And just like in uh, all other cases, higher dense of the mesh will be way better for this kind of operations, but again, performance. So I will just show you what you can do here. Oh, also, um, there might be small issue sometimes where displacer is out of the position basically because pivot of the sphere isn't in the middle of the world. So you just need to click at the axis button here and just make sure it's perfectly in the middle. This will make sure the displacer is in the correct position. And here, if you will have here denser mesh, you can add curve at the top of the vertex map and make something like this to make it look like waves. If we go to the display and change it to lines, you can kind of see those waves, it's hard to tell because it's too low poly. But yeah, if it will be denser, you, you can have really nice waves going on. And then you can apply smoothing from the deformers underneath the displacer and just mess with the settings here, like so. And you will have nice waves. Of course, this is uh, a bit too much. We'll have to make it a bit smaller. And yeah, there's way more things you can adjust here. It's there's you can like uh, you can also, for example, uh, connect maybe vertex map to roughness in those material and make it on every hit make everything more blurry. Maybe I'll show it. So I will enable roughness in both of these channels and let's connect it to one of them. Let's add the gradient here. And let's connect it to here to roughness. And if you take a look here, uh, our character is uh, clean and on the impact we have blur uh, on, on it. So there's a lot of things you can adjust here, but you have knowledge to make the base of this force feed material. And hopefully you find it entertaining and you learn something new today. If you like my content, you can consider subscribing. Um, my goal here on this channel is to upload one tutorial every week. Also, uh, you can follow me on Instagram if you want to be up to date with my tutorials. Usually I'm posting ahead what will be my next tutorial about there. So yeah, I think that's it. See ya.